Hey everyone, I'm Northern Explorer. Welcome to my channel. I've seen several questions online lately regarding camper insurance. Does your truck insurance cover your camper? Does your homeowner's insurance cover your camper? Do you need a specific insurance policy just for your camper? In today's video, I'm going to tell you all about the experience that I had with my insurance company regarding the two claims that I had on my previous four wheel camper. Back in 2008, I purchased a Finch model four-wheel camper. From day one, I had insurance on this camper. I had the same insurance company that I had for my vehicle, so there was a little bit of a bundle discount in doing that. I had insurance for basically two main reasons. First of all, the credit union where I got the loan required me to have insurance on the camper. And second of all, I just thought it was a good idea to have insurance on it since it was like the fourth most expensive thing that I had ever purchased in my life. So I had insurance on it because of that. And because I felt that it was a kind of a pricey item, I kept insurance on the camper even after I had paid off the loan. I had many years of use out of my camper with my insurance acting as nothing but peace of mind. But in 2016, that all changed when a giant branch fell onto my truck and my camper. An insurance adjuster was sent over to assess the damage and they determined that the truck was a total loss. The camper, however, got away with just a small hole in the roof. And because of that, the camper was not deemed a loss. So the insurance company came up with a payout that th they thought was going to cover the cost of the repairs. They didn't know where I was going to have it repaired or how long it was going to take to repair, but they came up with an exact number of uh, $1,834.30. They determined was what it was going to cost to fix it. So their idea was I could bring it to any RV dealer in the area and they would fix it up no problem. And I knew that wasn't going to be the case because four wheel campers are aluminum framed campers with an aluminum roof, whereas most campers that you see are wooden framed with rubber roofs. So I, I knew there wasn't any RV dealer around here that was going to be able to fix that. So not being the arguing type, I just kind of signed off on what they gave me. And I kind of went into research mode to figure out how much it would cost me to get this fixed the right way. So I called up Four Wheel Campers, the main headquarters in Woodland, California, and I asked them to give me a quote. Their quote for a, a new roof, they weren't gonna repatch it, to give me a whole new roof was a little over $3,000. So right there I was in the hole, right off the bat. In addition to that, they said they were gonna need it for three weeks because the camper that I had was out of production. So they would have had to have basically built the roof from scratch. I don't think they had the the jigs anymore or the pattern anymore by the sounds of it. So it was gonna take them three weeks to build me a new roof. So I would have driven from Michigan out to California, taken time off of work to do that, gas, food, lodging all the way there, drop it off, gas, food, lodging all the way back, and then a week and a half later or so, turn around, drive all the way back out to California to pick up my camper. So I asked the guy at Four Wheel Campers, I said, instead of picking it up in three weeks, could I leave it there and pick it up when I head out west for my summer vacation? And he said there was no way that they could store my camper for that period of time. I don't really blame him for that. Uh, this was before they moved into their newer facility that has a lot more room. And I think even now they wouldn't be able to do that because they're they're so busy and so backlogged. They don't really have room to store people's campers. So to drive to California and back 
four legs of that trip, gas, food, lodging, time off of work, plus $3,000 for a new roof, I would have been well in the hole for what the insurance company gave me. So I decided instead I was gonna try and fix the roof myself. So this is what I did. Fortunately, the headliner wasn't damaged. I used a bottle jack and a two x four to push the frame back into place. The only items that I needed to purchase were a corner brace and epoxy that was specifically formulated for bonding metal. I just happened to have a piece of tin in stock. I cut open the hole a little larger to gain access to the cracked frame and with a healthy slathering of epoxy, I placed the corner brace where the square tube crossed at a 90 degree angle. Using the same epoxy, I completely coated the bottom of the patch and placed it over the hole. I pushed down on the patch with enough pressure to cause the epoxy to ooze out around the edges. After the epoxy cured, I spray painted the patch to match the roof. So with the repair that I did to the roof myself, it only cost about 20 bucks, I think, to fix it, and it turned out really good. The only question that I had in the back of my mind was if if I ever sold that camper obviously I would disclose to whoever was buying it that it, it had a hole in the roof that I fixed so I was thinking would that depreciate the the sale price by how much I saved in with my insurance payout because obviously I came out ahead with what my insurance company paid me but I think it, it probably would have uh, depreciated the value of the camper somewhat if I had ever sold that camper. But I never sold the camper, and a couple years later I had my second incident in which I rolled off a road, and basically this time I totaled my truck and my camper. So after my truck rolled off the road, the question I had in my mind was, what exactly does my insurance policy entail for this camper? Uh, I knew my truck was totaled and I knew kind of what the process for that was, but I wasn't sure exactly what was gonna happen with the payout for my camper. Uh, it turns out the, it, the outcome was much better. Um, on my insurance policy for my camper, they basically paid me what I paid for the camper without any type of depreciation. So in 2008, I paid right around $11,700 for my camper. And that's what the insurance company gave me. In addition to that, the insurance company gave me uh, a certain quantity of money, $750, to cover uh, any expenses that were incurred because I didn't have the camper. So basically, I was able to pay for uh, a rental car to get home. This happened just outside of Moab, by the way. And it covered most of our hotels and gas on the way home. In addition, the insurance company paid me for the, the towing fee for the two off-road recovery companies that needed to come up and get my truck off the hillside. So I had to pay them up front right after they, they did it. And then um, I, I would get the receipt and then send it to my insurance company and then they would reimburse me for what they charged me. And that was $1,787.50. So the insurance paid for all of that, but I did have to pay for it up front. And then the last thing that my insurance company paid for was because my policy ended early, because I didn't have a camper anymore, um, I actually got a, a policy refund of $93. So that, that all worked out pretty good for me. Of course, it sucked to lose my camper. Um, but as far as what the insurance company paid me, I was pretty happy with that. Skipping forward 
to the camper that I have now. It's a 2020 four wheel camper Hawk shell. And I basically have the, the same insurance policy and I am paying paid in full $196 a year. And that's in Michigan. So I think that's worth it. And again, I have my vehicles insured through the same company. So that's for a, a camper that I paid just over $17,000 for. So $196 a year. I think that's a, a halfway decent deal. In conclusion, I personally wouldn't rely on my truck or homeowner's insurance to cover my camper. I feel much better having a specific insurance policy just for my camper. If you've had a truck camper insurance claim, and would like to share your experience, please comment below. I would be especially interested to hear how things turned out if you filed a claim under your truck or homeowner's insurance policy. That's it for this one. Like and subscribe, and I'll catch you next time.